What's up, everybody? Welcome to Mike and Dave Hit the Stage. I'm Mike. I'm Dave. Why does it sound like a very special episode? I don't, I don't know. know. You got real smooth on this one. I don't know, because I'm trying to find a happy medium for you so you don't yell at me or laugh at me when I do uh, an intro. I'm still laughing. I know. That was pretty good. On a very special Mike and Dave. <laughs> well, for me, this is a very special one. Today, we are going to talk about Clutch and Clutch Alone, because on May 17th, I went to see Clutch at the Paramount. Dave was supposed to come with me, but he could not. I could not get out of work. And uh, so uh, I sent him the uh, playlist, I mean the set list, uh, and uh, I just want to get your feedback about Clutch. Uh, so let's get a little history of Clutch. Clutch started in 1991. Uh, they're from Germantown, Maryland. The whitest name for a neighborhood I've ever heard. <laughs> uh Right? Yeah, they started with, uh, it, it's Dan Maines on bass, John Paul Gaster on drums, Tim Salt on guitar, and originally they had Roger Smalls on vocals. But he left. And they got Neil and Fallon. And they got Neil Fallon. And it's been the same guys for, geez, 91, 2001, 30 years. That's an impressive run with... V- uh, Almost no changes. One single change. Yeah. In the, in the very beginning. I before say, they were even signed. Before the, okay, so before the first album. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, they named the band Clutch because they were all into cars. Obvi- I couldn't imagine what it would be otherwise. <laughs> uh, they have, uh, at the moment, 13 studio albums. For 30 years, that's an impressive number. Mm-hmm. But still, it's still kind of high when you think Black Sabbath only had 13 albums. And they were, what? They started in 1969, 1970. Yeah. But they, they they did 13 albums in that time, and they were broken up for a good long time. Right. So you're saying it's a lot of albums or not enough it's, albums for it's, 30 years? It's it's quite a, a, quite oh, a bit of albums. But here's the thing. And also, they're, they have released... I mean, I can't even tell you how many EPs, how many live albums in between this stuff. If you go on their um, their Spotify or whatever, and you put them in and you look at their discography... It's immense. It has to be. Yeah, it's it, they release a lot of stuff, and it's great in between albums. And uh, uh, I know it's it, it's it's a known fact for Clutch fans that they have never put out a bad album. Well, I'm not going to say bad album. Okay, but well, I, you that, haven't heard a full album. I haven't heard a full album. Right. I did listen to this list multiple times. Okay, and I have comments. And most of them are not what you'd expect. Okay. Now, the funny thing is, is, listening to this set list, there are so many more songs I've wanted wanted you to hear. There's so much... Not that these are bad songs. Not not any of them are bad songs in my eyes. Some of them, I, I would listen to them and i go, I'm not sure Dave's going to like this. You know? And some of them I want to know what you think. Oh, I'm going to uh, give you my honest opinion on each one of them. Right. And it's, I don't think you're going to be surprised. Okay. Okay. But I think you're going to be. Well, I'm interested in what you're going to, yeah. you know, what, what your, what your take on it is. Okay. And also you can tell, uh, I, 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 we spoke about this before. I, I don't think on the podcast, but you can tell the era of the band by the way Neil sings. Because of how, either how wild and, and raspy his voice is mm-hmm. or controlled. Mm-hmm. That I could tell that right away just from, not from the artwork, but just from the tone. Right. And I also noticed listening to this that uh, their musical style uh, changed. Like I've noticed it before, but they were, they're always lumped in kind of as a, as a, a stoner rock band. I don't see that at all. There's one album I could see where they, they, are, they, uh, are any of those songs on here? Uh, yes, there's a couple. Okay, we're going to go over that. Right. Um, but uh, all right, let's start out. Yeah, let's look at the list. Yeah. So the first track you have on here is Impetus. Yes. Um, I don't know what I don't know the names of any of these albums. Like, uh, I didn't, this was on, I believe this was originally on an EP, and then they put it on a deluxe version of, I forget what album. So this is on Passive Restraints. Mm-hmm. Second EP by Clutch, released in 1992. Okay. So this is, and I know this is going to sound like a bad start. Go ahead. I did not enjoy anything about this song. Really? 
I didn't like the tone. I didn't like the the, the guitar tone. His voice okay. was too much. There are the cops. <laughs> There's uh, so much of the of the sound was, and I know you enjoy that gritty sound. Mm-hmm. There was too much grit. Okay, where you lose guitar tone, you lose the bass tone in the into the mix, uh-huh. and it just didn't it didn't sit well with me. Uh, couldn't really get the vo- the with the the lyrics going. Yeah, like it just didn't sit in a place where I enjoyed it. Okay, and like I said, I'm gonna have comments on each song. Right, but right off the bat, it, I, I was like, this might be like the, the second the, the first time I played this through. The, I was like, this might be a slog. Uh-huh. Like I might have to drag my ass through this. Okay, and all right. Because I make promises. I I do. Well, uh, you know, I, I l- went through l- listen, it. Listen, if that ever happens before we record something, oh, I would definitely. Yeah, be like, it. dude, I can't do this. I'm like, Mm-mm. <laughs> yeah. I almost did that with the uh, with the garbage covers. <laughs> I was like, I don't know if I could do this. <laughs> that was a rough one, but we it got through rough. it. We got through it. Uh, we did. So, knowing that this is from 1992, I can give it quite a bit of leeway, right? Because if you're comparing it to other stuff out in 92, mm-hmm. 92, 93, Sponge and Green Day, uh, the quality is not much worse. Right. Now, you have to remember, they Clutch never got that oh, super big. Huge. Yeah. Right. I only know them. I, I know them because my friend Sean loves them. His right. wife, Nishana, one of my best friends, they, the two of them. We're so close. They they love Clutch. It, same and with he, me. It's, almost to the point where they're mad at me for not being into it. No, see, I wouldn't. Here's the thing is, and actually doing this podcast has actually helped. Um, I don't get angry at people who don't like stuff anymore. Wormed. Okay, forget it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, me, I love that one word can well, ruin his well, day. There's, well, there's, I, I'm saying uh, uh, musically, because that is not music. Um <laughs> So, so I don't get like, and, and I used to get mad at people who I like, like, you you know, how do you not like clutch? I am one of those people who every clutch album comes out. I listen to it. I'm like, another one for the list. There's not a clutch album where I go, you know, that one, I'm just, I'm not, I'm not going to pass that. I guess this is what, okay. uh, So, and it's not, it's not a a grateful dead, uh, love. Like, yeah, you wouldn't follow them. The cool thing about clutch is that every set list is different every night. That is something that I can appreciate. Yeah, it's very cool. And I am, I, I gotta say one thing with this one, I am very pleased with this with this playlist, I mean, with this set list. Okay. I, are there other, are there songs I'm, that I wish they would have played? Of course, but. I'm gonna, I'm gonna say this now. I'm holding back what I'm, what I, what I wanna say. Okay. Because we're not deep enough into the list for me to right. give my I, honest opinion. I, I'm going to give you a prediction that you like the back end of the, uh, you don't have to tell me now, that you like the back end of this set list more than the, the front end. Okay, I, I, see gonna, I, I see what you're saying. All right, so let's uh, let's go on to the second one, which is, uh, okay, go ahead. 12 ounce epilogue. Right. This is one of the shortest songs on the uh, on the album. Mm-hmm. Two minutes, 50 seconds. Mm-hmm. Better. Okay, all right. Uh, baseline. Almost the same song. Almost, but the bass line is what changes. Okay. The tone. Right. And the guitar tone is clearer. Right. His singing is still Well, this is crispy. this is their first album. See, I, I like I said, I didn't do, I, I went into this blind for a reason. Right. And knowing that it's is their first diff- album. Yes, this is their first album, yeah. Uh knowing that it, it helps, mm-hmm. but at the same time I'm trying to see where ninety three. Yeah. Right, is that their first album? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, this is tra- Transnational Speedway. <laughs> Transnational Speedway League. Yeah. Anthems, and, anecdotes, right. and the undeniable truths in the uh, is the studio album by American rock band Clutch. Uh-huh. Uh, recorded at Razor's Studios in San Francisco, California, produced by... Yeah, whatever. Where the hell are you getting all this info from? How do you do that? Oh, if you click on the song, yeah, the triple dots next to the song, and go to album... Oh, shit. And then shoot. under more, it shows you uh, if it has a synopsis from Wikipedia, it grabs it. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's cool. All right. So I do appreciate that there's a huge change between an EP and an album. And right. there should be, obviously. Right, right. Um, this was better, mm-hmm. but I'm still not sold. Okay. All uh, right. Things are improving, and I'm enjoying it. Okay. A little more. Right. 
uh, not digging that, still not digging the sound completely. Now, are you, this is going to be hard. I bet it is. Uh, clutch songs uh, are very, some of them are very interesting to try to figure out what they're about. Oh, I'm not even trying to interpret. Oh, no? I'm just trying to, okay, because the meaning behind the song is one thing. Right. How it makes you feel is something different. Okay. Um, we talk about how grand and big songs I like are. Right. And that does. You're not going to get one me. from Clutch. I, I know that. I remember I did listen to the set list. Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, no, I'm just saying. You but know. the grandiose part of it is one thing. I just realized I had the volume up on this thing. I'm glad I stopped it nah. just in case it plays. Because I am looking at a playlist, and if I did that, something would start. Like it just did. It's okay. I just want to make sure that it didn't start playing. Mm -hmm. So um, this one, this one, I'm a, basically it's it's a commercialism song. He yeah. likes to bring. He he mentions Coca Cola in this. You know. I did get commercialism out of it. I didn't yeah. know if it was something weird or deeper. The no, no, no. Uh, Sometimes, believe me, it's there no, are some songs on here that that didn't that aren't on this set list that are. I do want to say this is no trippy. rock and roll McDonald's. Thank God. <laughs> I like Wesley Willis. All right, good for you. McDonald's will make you fat. Whatever. McDonald's serves quarter pounders. They will. They will put on the pounds. <laughs> I don't care what you say. That is hilarious. All right, so this one you liked a little better. A little better. Yeah. Now, the so next one we have... We're going to build. We're going to build I have the here. body of John Wilkes Booth. Yes. This is this is one that got me. You liked it? I liked it. Okay. Not... I wasn't in love. Okay. But I was like, yeah, I can get this. I can get behind this. This is uh, off... Now, there's a couple on this set list that, that are off... Of, this is their second album. Self-titled album. This is my favorite Clutch album. This is a Desert Island album, isn't it? Uh, definitely. A hundred percent. I can feel that. They could have played this whole album, and I would have been happy. And slightly erect. Yeah, probably. <laughs> uh, all right, so tell me about uh, I Have the Body of John Wilkes Booth. The tone, the guitar tone, his uh -huh. voice, everything is cleaner. Right. Um, not as clean as other songs, but still much cleaner than it. This is the album where I think they get pigeonholed as a stoner rock band. I can see that. Also, the album type. So I don't know if you had dealt with any of the hardcore bands and the 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 metalcore bands mm -hmm. in the early two thousands, right? With long names. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, um, uh, long names of of the band and songs. Yeah, like we are the men that bury your dead and stuff like that. Oh yeah. Nah. Uh, my favorite is actually uh, the Tony Danza tap dance extravaganza. <laughs> Have you ever heard that band? I, it sounds familiar. Oh, they are awful. Right. They're great, but awful. Okay. But um, the, the name reminded me of that. Right. And Clutch it, does like a long name. Yeah. It, I, I see that in a couple of songs, but uh, some of them aren't, like, they're not that bad. Right. Like, title, like, I've heard way worse titles of songs. Yeah. But uh, I dug this. I, I definitely dug this way more than the, the first two songs. Right. And it was like, okay, now I, 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 I feel like it's less, it's going to be less of a slog. Mm -hmm. I'm starting to... I was starting to give, like, listen to it and looking forward to what's going to happen next. Right. The first two, I'm like, I don't know. I yeah. don't know if this is going to work. I might have to tap out on this. <laughs> and then the second song, I'm like, okay, maybe I can make it through. And this one's like, I'll be all right. I'll, so I can, I can dance through this. This song is about the conspiracy. I'm not going to do this for every song, but. The conspiracy? This, the conspiracy of John Wilkes Booth that he got away. Yes. And uh, it's told from the perspective uh, of, I forget the guy's name. He. Uh, he he ran a sideshow, I believe, and he said that he had the body of John Wilkes Booth, and he it was a mummified body, and he he put it on display. Only people from Maryland would have this as a song title. Well, they're that close to Washington. Yeah, you I gotta know. Think it's, it's some national treasures that's, level. That's the wonderful thing about Clutch is that um, the things they sing about are so. That's what I'm saying. It, they have uh, conspiracy songs. They have songs about uh, well, there's a song on, on on this list about about aliens. About you know, it's 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 so fun. The guy doesn't doesn't. There's no one focus of a, of a of a specific type. Of, right. He's like a storyteller almost. I, and I I dig that. Yeah. Like that's actually what I love about Iron Maiden. They're mm -hmm. not all about the same thing. Right. Some are about uh, mythology. Some are about history. Some are right. about. Uh, books, movies, music, you know, they, they really touch on everything. Right. And these guys seem to touch on just about every possible mm -hmm. to topic. Mm -hmm. Oh, sorry. What happened? 
That's the next alarm. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> what's, what's now? You've rolled through. Go, go take a dump. <laughs> no, no, not that one. Oh, excuse me. You, shouldn't you have a metal musical alarm? It at already this point? went off at seven o'clock. We weren't doing this. We were eating dinner. <laughs> uh, so let's move on to the next one: skeletons on Mars. Okay, so this one, this is where I was like, "Yeah, this is this is awesome." Because this is the newest, newest album. album. I could tell by the production quality. Yeah, it was. It's so stylized. Yeah, and it feels like the bass lines are thick, mm-hmm. but not. Like they're not clanky, they're not crackly, mm-hmm. they're not picked heavy. They have this this laid back, thick sound, almost like right. He's using a felt pick. Have you ever seen that? No. So um, they're called plectrums. Okay. They're actually made with thick felt. Okay. So it's, it's not like, plastic. No. Right. And it gives more of a almost like a thumb. A th- feel. Okay. Mm-hmm. It's such a different sound. Right. And that's kind of the feel I got from some of this. Okay. It it it's really pleasing to the ears. Mm-hmm. This song specifically. My wife did not like this. I don't really? any of it. Oh, really? She just did not dig it. She's okay. Like, she's like, this is some weird white people shit. Right. I'm like, I, I, I guess, and I, I, to an extent, I agree. Okay. But a lot of the stuff I listen to is weird white people shit. Yeah. And not all of it can be, you know. Hey, right. Some of it's just not your cup of tea. Yeah. You know? It can't all be, you know, polyrhythmic. I don't know what the fuck that even means. How do I explain it? Uh. Latin music. It's okay. polyrhythmic. All right. It can't all be that, By the way, and this is, uh, you know, you say white people stuff. Uh, uh, Mary Jane li- sometimes listens to the... It all sounds the same to me. Wow. It does. <laughs> On this episode, I learned Mike's racist. <laughs> wow. You could say this is some white people shit, and I can't say Cause that. Because I'm both white and Hispanic. It doesn't matter. Some white people bullshit. My kids and my wife are half Hispanic. <laughs> yeah, so you get to say it all sounds the same. Do they I all look say, the same? Wow, racist? that's what I didn't say. All right, that's where I didn't go. But it all—it's all. And I'm like, all right, again. So my dad refers to uh, certain types of Spanish music as the tiki ding music. Yeah, it's all. And everyone starts that way, and I'm like, ah, oh, all right. I, I I get it. I'll listen to a few, but. You, you know, know what a clave is? But let's, uh... What? Do you know what a clave is? No. The... Okay. Yeah. That rhythm is a lot of Latin jazz. Yeah. And if you play it, somebody's going to go, hey! Yeah. My dad's like, yeah, there it is. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, you can't miss it. I, I love calling people out on it because uh, you didn't notice it. Yeah, there it is. <laughs> but funny. yeah, this is... This album, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to spoil a little bit, a little bit of this. Every song from this album. Yes. I love This newest album is uh, Every is single great. song from this album, I was like, yes. Uh-huh. I was like, they thumbs up added to the list individually songs. Right, right, right. So this album's going to end up entirely on, on, my, mm-hmm. on my collection. Mm-hmm. The next one, though, was... Monster Trucks. That's what they call it. Monster yeah, because yeah. it's actually walking in the great shining path of Monster Trucks. Right. This is on their first album again. Yeah. Like I said, uh, the production quality is decent, not right. great. Uh, the style is mm, okay. Right. You have to understand that a lot of this stuff is, not a lot of this stuff, but um, it, it, this is a little deeper. This is a little deeper than what you would hear uh, on a radio station. Obviously. They, you know what I mean? I think everything that they do is a little deeper than what you'd hear on regular radio. Right, but some of these songs have been oh, yeah, on like K-Rock and stuff like that. You but know? they still feel like they're a little deeper than that. Yeah. Well, this whole band is that they, well, you know. The joke, like we talk about songs that are were on the radio that that maybe shouldn't have been, mm-hmm. like "Lightning Crashes" by Live. Right. Uh, it was a little deeper than it should have been for the style. Right. I love the live 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 uh, live that, is that, live live is great. I've that seen them twice. First album. Yeah. Was ma- uh, the first two. Yeah. Uh, were magic. Mm-hmm. And then they broke down. Yeah, well, uh, Ed, Ed, Ed Kowalski went a little, uh, yeah, in, into his own head. He he fell. He, he got he a little. For, yeah, he fell for his own uh, avarice. He, he listen. You know the deal. He screwed his whole. He screwed his childhood friends. Yep. To try to make it without them. It's basically what happened yep. to Live. And everyone knew about it. And the band. Right. They he suffered as much as they did for it. Right. Because people found out what he did and just ignored him. Right. And I'm kind of glad about that. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Because if you're going to be a dick, you deserve to be treated right, that's like that. 
You, you lost you lost friends you've known since freaking childhood. They, I think they met in elementary at, school. Was it that early? School. Was it that? I don't know. Well, I, they started in, in high school. They yeah. started the band. Yeah, I know it in high school. Yeah. I, I don't know when they met, though. But uh, so you didn't like monster trucks? I didn't love it. Okay. I don't know what's going on out I there. I don't know. As long as there's no gunshots through yeah. the window, we're yeah, all right. We're, good. we're all right. <laughs> it's Brooklyn, 8 o'clock on, eight o'clock on a Saturday. <laughs> so the next one is Red Alert. And it says Boss Metal Zone. Is yes. that what this was recorded with? No. He is singing about a, a boss, pedal. A Boss Metal Zone pedal. A pedal. pedal. Here's one thing I'm going to tell you about Clutch. They uh, sometimes, like, when this came up, uh, when I bought the album, this was the first song on this album that I went, uh-oh. Because I went, you're really, you're really going to sing about a, uh, yeah. a a pedal? Yeah, I didn't love this one. Really? Yeah, it was all right. Get out of here. It was all right. I love it. After a while. It was it good. Was, right. So Clutch. Uh, I on, do love this album. On one of their albums. On a, is, is it one? I think it's two before this. They have a song called Hot Bottom Feeder. And it's basically a, uh, a, oh, sorry. a recipe for crab cakes. Fucking Maryland. Yeah. It's fucking it's awesome. But what? they can sing about anything. Well, fucking Maryland is crab cakes and ass sex. That's all they know. Okay. <laughs> so you didn't like this fucking, song either? What didn't you like about this song? It's not that I didn't like it. It was, it was, our, I was like, I don't know if this is going to be. Like at this point, I'd only heard the one song from the album. Yeah, and I was like, "All right, this is okay, but is this what the rest of the album's going to be?" Right. Was was um, skeletons on Mars going to be what what it's like? Right. You know, I wasn't quite sure where it was going to sit. Mm -hmm. And this was good, but it wasn't like production quality wise, it was great. Right. Content wise, it was a little weird. Well, yeah. They, they, sometimes they sing about a boss metal zone. But then the next track came on, and Those I was like, Madre. Yeah, so good, dude." I, I, I fucking love this I was song. getting Dust Till Dawn vibes from this. Right? Because it's a story. It's a story. He was, uh, well, he's speaking of a slave who was thrown overboard. Right? Which is really not the story he should be telling. Uh, no, but. I know. <laughs> you know, and then he, and then uh, Nosferatu Madre. I, I, I'm, I don't know where the story goes after that. Like, I try to listen. I'm like, is he saying that? He becomes a a vampire. I'm very. That's the part I don't understand where he goes after that. Well, I think you got it wrong. What do you mean? the The first line is, "I was accused of witch, uh, witchcraft right. aboard the Mayflower ship. Right. They threw me overboard. Ten stone of ballast chained to my legs. Right. That would be. There were no slaves on that ship. Oh, is it? All right. So he was. That'd uh, just be a pilgrim. Yeah. All right. Accused of witchcraft and tossed that bitch overboard. All right. Yeah. Um. The witchcraft back then was the that was the thing, right? Right. They of had the satanic panic first. <laughs> Oof. They they really knew how to fuck up the new world. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But yeah, that's I, it's a really good song. It's like I, when when I heard it, I got the the. I don't know if you know this. There there are stories about like there are stories written separate from Dracula, right? And from other vampire stories about right. the trip from the old world to the new. Uh huh. Hunting on the ships on the way from from the old world to the new, right? To the point where they're making movies about it. Yeah, about vampires traveling from, in this case, I think it was England mm -hmm. to America on a ship. They're making them, or there's one movie I think coming out next year. I think it's yeah. It either came out or it's coming out. They're even redoing Nosferatu, right? No, but that's it's it's supposed to be the the time span in between leaving f leaving for America and right. arriving. Yeah. And that 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 trip mm -hmm. is what makes all the difference. Okay, because all everything that and there were no survivors on that ship. Uh huh. That was the joke. Ah. Like the ship arrives and there's nobody left. It's a ghost ship. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And then he just comes off him yeah. and him and his his familiar. Yeah. Because no Nosferatu is not a Dracula story. No, it's a, just a vampire. It's a different vampire. Right, right. It's technically a different species of vampire. The way oh, they, okay. The way they treat it. Yeah, they you know the way they they've looked at it in film and you know the way they've adapted it into games like Vampire the Masquerade. Right. There's a different. Their Nosferatu are different than uh, uh, the okay. Tremere or the I, I can't remember the other names. Know. There are, there are other um, like breeds of vampires. Okay, I didn't know that. They're feral. I'm not that uh, into you know the vampire lore. My wife was really into the game Vampire I never, Masquerade. I, I never got into the goth. You never got into a goth. I 
Really? Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, I used to hang out at Torrid. Anyway. What? Nothing. If you like plus size goth girls, you hang out where they hang out. Wow. What? Nothing. Not Sorry, judging. I didn't know I was speaking, speaking not, out of turn. I am not judging. You shouldn't. I am not. All right, let's move on to Green Buckets. Yeah, this was pretty good. I'm going to put this in like a... Really? This is one I didn't... Like a, like a I listen, I listened like a to this one, and I went, uh, he may not like this one. I wasn't in love. I'll give it a C. Okay. Um, so, Red Alert would be a B. Skeleton, skeletons on Mars would be an A. Mm -hmm. I Have the Body of John Williams Booth would be a B. Impetus would be a D. Okay. Uh, monster truck. I'm going to short it. Monster trucks. Yeah. That's a C minus. Okay. Green Bucks is a C. All right. Yeah, it was solid C. I like it because at first I had no idea what, what I was listening to. And yeah. then you you listen to it and it's kind of a stalkery song. Oh. Hmm. Did you look? Yeah. He's, yeah. Right? He's trying to convince somebody. Yeah, to come hang out. Right. That we could be the pillars of the neighborhood. I would like to love you. I'm yeah. Sh I'm sh I am I'm sure would treat you right. Right. I would take, we could take out the trash every, every Thursday, Thursday night. night. Right. <laughs> Neil Fallon it's, rules. How is that? Neil Fallon rules. He does. Those are some of the worst lyrics. Because he can make that work. Did he make it work, though? I love it. Mm. Yeah, but the thing is, when you love a group, uh, it's easy to love everything they do. Yeah. Wormed. But I don't. Well, I, garbage person. I don't love everything they do. Okay. You you should pick something I'm obsessed with. Like what? Like Symphony X. Dream Theater. Oh, nah. Yeah, no. Uh, nah. Because you don't want to listen to 22 minute songs. God damn, no. Holy crap, no. I guarantee if I. There's one I could play for you that you would. You'd forget it was happening. I'm sure like you there would, are. You would lose it in. I'm like, sure tracks there changing. are. But. I just, it it seems pretentious to me. It is a bit, you know. I'll, I'll admit that. Ugh. But I think okay. I don't know about Symphony X. No. But Dream Theater, they write as if they're writing classical music. Okay. There's movements to it. Yeah. So first movement, second movement. Yeah. There's it, there's in between spaces. If I listened to it, I would have a fucking uh, movement. Vowel movement. Um, Symphony <laughs> X. Um, the power metal uh, part of it. Mm -hmm. Always drew me in, and then the progressive stuff was really just what kept me coming back. Like they, the their writing, and yeah. it, with with Clutch, I, I want to bring it back to Clutch. Yes, of course. It's it's obviously not a, a progressive band. It's not, but the fact that they're true to the, the true to themselves mm -hmm. and true to the style is really something I can appreciate. Yeah, it's one of those sounds that now that I've 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 heard three or four different examples. Mm -hmm. And it's like I can pull it out of thin air. Right. It's like, oh, that's clutch. Without without even okay. hearing his voice. Okay. Um, actually it's funny because the next oh no, I just accidentally removed the track from this. I get it. which one did Oh no, I didn't. All I right. got it. So, so all right, go ahead. I like how we did that in unison yeah, like that idiots. Jinx. The next oh. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> the next song, uh, a shogun named Marcus. Okay. This is the first song I ever heard by Clutch. Okay. And this was, now I've been waiting for this point. This is WSOU again. I found Clutch. N uh, no. I am wrong. I saw Clutch first. Okay. Didn't realize I saw Clutch until I looked at a uh, ticket stub that I had from 1994. It said Clutch. That said, yeah. Under Life of Agony. They Which is opened, a weird combo. They opened for Life of Agony. That's a strange combo. Yeah. So I have comments on this one, and they're not... It's weird, because there's a lot of subject matter here mm -hmm. that, I don't know, it just doesn't... What do you mean? How do I explain it? The song, the... The, the, the Japanese stuff and Continental Samurai, Kamikaze Backbone... And then brown sugar, sweet potato, sour yes. mash, baby back. Come on, man. <laughs> Harry Carey and Combines. Come on. Okay, go ahead. I'm, I'm, I'm hearing it, and I'm not believing that I'm hearing it. Like, I, it's weird. Yeah, it's supposed to be weird. I know it's supposed to be it's weird. It's a shogun named Marcus. Yeah. Okay? 
It's, this a, is, it's a guy from like Utah, so probably. So this is my... Oh. A white guy from Utah with a sword? Fucking no. That never happens. <laughs> Fucking white kid blade bullshit. All right, go ahead. Sorry. <laughs> I don't know if you've ever seen the videos of some random kid defending his house with a samurai sword. And he's like, I came out and did my kata. Yeah, but didn't he, didn't he? wasn't there another guy that cut his mom's head off with a samurai sword? There's a, there's Somewhere? A, uh, one of the guys who was in the Power Rangers killed somebody with a, with a katana. All right. Yeah. For not real? one of the cool ones. Uh, not the green. Well, not, no. Well, green. Unfortunately, rest, he. Rest in peace, Green Ranger. Yeah, green, white. Original green, original white. Yeah. We're not supposed to say white Power Ranger. <laughs> <laughs> uh, wow. Okay, so. I prefer the green Power Ranger anyway. So, okay, so this is the point where I think you. This is the point where I went, all right, I think Dave is going to start enjoying the the playlist well it picks up a bit i didn't enjoy this i okay all right uh, not not to shit on it right i just didn't enjoy it okay this is one of my favorite songs but so go fuck yourself the next <laughs> one slaughter beach yeah home run right it's a home run i well, love that's why it's this the, is the a plus yeah that's why it's the uh the title track. yeah and there's not much to say about it other than it's no, a fucking it's, home run it's uh just and the way he sings it the, the music, everything. Uh, we strive for excellence. I give it a B. Okay, it's good. Yeah, heavy. It's got some some push to it. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't quite. I don't think I was looking. What? I'm trying to think. Yeah, this is the one I was thinking of. Which one? Yeah, uh, strive for strive excellence. for excellence. Well, what about it? Uh, the dinner bell ain't calling me home. Mm-hmm. I was like, I get what you're saying. Yeah. No six million dollar men, no retakes, no Hollywood. I kind of like that the down and dirty mm-hmm. attitude. You're in the you're in the Cub Scouts, right? Have I ever told you my theory about the Cub Scouts? No, uh, I don't think so. So they 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 teach people glamping instead of camping. Okay, they like, do. I I every every event I've seen yeah is very passive. Uh, like, well, I don't know how it is now. When I was in the Boy Scouts, it was I was in the Weeblos. Go ahead. Nope. <laughs> nope. As a child, as a child thing, I'm not um, doing that. So we went, uh, we went camping. Did I, was I ever an actual Boy Scout? I think I was. I don't remember. Check your knees. Uh, nah. There it is. But we went to uh, uh, Alpine, New Jersey, off of the Palisades Parkway, and uh, it was an overnight thing. And you had to, you know, do things from from merit badges and whatnot. But you slept in a fucking lean to. Okay. It was not in a hotel room. It was not. So you know when your dad tells you you should do this, it builds character? Right. My dad pulled me out of Cub Scouts so fast. Why? Because they weren't teaching me how to do things his way. Okay. Uh, my dad used to go so, camping, no so, tent. So your dad's real strict on the way. Yeah. All right. My dad used go to go camping, no tent, no All lean-to. Right. Okay, that's on him. He used to sleep in a tree. <laughs> okay, good for him. Jesus Christ. I used to sleep on the ground. <laughs> Good for you. Because there was no fucking chance I was getting up in a tree. All right. You know what? I'd rather sleep in a tree than on the ground where the fucking ants are going to eat me and whatever the fucking creepy crawlies are around down there. You get used to it. Uh, okay. That's uh, why hunting, got... trapping. Yeah. By the way. Jesus Christ. You, wanna... you, could, you couldn't just go and make a fucking thing of bacon in the morning? I would have. It wasn't my choice. I didn't want to do any Did of that Did you guys shit. eat squirrels or something? Uh, no, rabbit. Why are you confused? I'm trying to think of when the last time you did that was. I was 14, 15. Oh, yeah? My, okay. Also, my dad stopped doing this in the 90s because he had multiple heart attacks. From eating rabbits? Yeah, I'm, that's what it was. I don't know. It's not rabbit. Trust me. Rabbit was not meaty enough to cause any oh, no. sort of damage. I heard, is, no. it, is, it, is it greasy? It's a little greasy. Yeah? Um, we did uh, deer, elk, and we'd uh, trap rabbit. Elk? Elk. You shot an elk? I, I shot a deer once. Okay. Um, with an arrow? Uh, no, with a gun. You like it? No. I went hunting once with a bow and arrow. A bow. Uh, I used to. I sold my bow, and I'm so angry at myself. When I was like 18, 19 years old, mm. I sold my compound, and I wish I had it now because I really had to just go shooting. I have a funny story about hunting. It. I hated it. Okay, so my dad had a compound bow. Yeah. Unrelated to hunting. Okay. He bought it from a pawn shop on Flatbush Avenue. Okay. In the early 70s, mm-hmm. when he came back uh, to New York. Uh, so he bought a compound bow, 
quickly realized that it wasn't a string compound bow. It's mm-hmm. a steel cable. What? The, the string? Yeah. Is a steel cable. That's not... Not normal. Yeah. This is by a company called Indian. By the way, okay. Indian is no longer in business. Right. Uh, mostly because steel cables are not great for hunting. No, I mean, how do you pull that back? You can. I can. It's in my, it's in my house. Okay. He gave it to me. Yeah. It still has his initials. Like, right. It, there, it had spaces for initial marking, markings. Okay. So it, it says uh, uh, BSJ, Benjamin Sanchez Jr. Okay. Um, I don't want to change that because I love my dad. Right. Uh, but I learned how to shoot with that at an archery range. Okay. Uh, I learned how to shoot guns from my dad. Mm-hmm. And we went hunting. We went hunting a few times. Yeah. My first time I did shoot. And I did kill a deer. And then I had to render a deer right. in the field. Nope. And I never wanted to do that shit again. I didn't. Right. I felt horrible shooting an animal. <laughs> call me, yeah, call me what you will. That ain't for me. You know what I mean? Now, the thing is, stripping a deer is one thing. That was pretty fucking horrible. <laughs> yeah. Oh, sorry. I was thinking wrong. <laughs> I was, I was going to make another tour joke. <laughs> Go ahead. No, no. It's not necessary. <laughs> anyway. Um, just the, just shooting an animal was unpleasant. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I as, as a kid, I shot birds, and, uh, you know, with a pellet gun and I felt fucking terrible. I used to scare the raccoons off our back deck with a BB gun, but yeah. not hitting them. Right. Right. Just next just to scare them. them off. Yeah. Yeah. Cause they were shitting all over the deck. Yeah. None of that's a euphemism or a misspelling. <laughs> I remember I have to clean raccoon shit off my deck and I spelled not one of those words wrong. <laughs> D E <E-s. laughs> God forbid you get that one letter wrong. <laughs> what? <laughs> anyway. Um, yes. Yeah. So as I got older, uh, I got into target shooting. Yeah. And then competitive shooting. Oh, look at you. Uh, All right. Doing two gun and, you know, you know, two gun is. Uh, t- <laughs> Rifle transition to pistol. Okay, now I was thinking it's two, two guns, one cup. I don't know. Wow. <laughs> Anytime somebody says do anything, it pops in my head. You immediately head. go to one it cup? It pops in my head, yeah. I hope you have to watch the whole video in your mind. No. Uh, I no. There it is. Now it is. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I did that. I, I was on a shooting team okay. for a little while. And uh, we used to do competitive distance shooting, competitive uh, attack course, competitive two gun. Mm-hmm. Some guys would even do the shotgun, you know, shotgun transitional stuff. I wasn't a fan of it. Okay. Um, it was a great time. Right. But I hate hunting. Yeah. Yeah. There's something about hunting that, because I know it's unnecessary. Now, my dad, uh, it, my, well, it, my dad believed it was a necessary skill to know. Okay. I, I wouldn't. And we had some right. very specific rules that he'd follow. Okay. They were personal rules. Everything my dad did was on his standards. Mm-hmm. So if there were if there was a kill, it had to be stripped and cleaned. Right. Skin, the entire pelt, right, would go to there was a local native uh native reservation. Okay. Donated and half of the meat. Really? Okay. We would only take half. Okay. And we'd give only them, as much as you can Well, he use. he planned for it and had a cooler with ice, right. and, you know, dry ice and all that. Right. But the big thing was he felt you had to give to the people. It makes sense. I, my dad, listen, I understand that. My dad that. believes that the, the people that the people that should own the land don't. And so he says, if I take I something it. from it, I got to give back. I get it. I, and we'd also, cause, yeah. because he didn't want to have to track an animal for a long distance, he would shoot in the head. Which it, right. it eliminates trophy hunting. Right. Which is actually technically more humane. Okay. It doesn't go running and... It, right, bleed out and yeah. And the other thing is it doesn't do is doesn't produce terrible meat. Because they're okay. not running for two miles with their heart pumping and right, adrenaline. lactose and all that uh, And none uh, of that happens. Not, uh, is, it, it, it uh, lactic acid. Yeah, right. Uh the, you don't get the lactic acid reaction, you don't get any of that. Right. The animal pretty much will maybe run a couple of feet and drop. Yeah. Yeah. Uh but the cleanup is pretty rough. Yeah. Because now you have a big open, big open wound on top. Gross. So when you string it up upside down, it's already leaking. And you bleed out. Okay. How so, did, how did that, so your dad strive for excellence. Is that where you go? <laughs> I don't know. I understand. Where the fuck did we go? I don't remember. I don't remember. You said something to your, your dad about the Boy Scouts. And oh, the Boy Scouts. 
because you're talking the, the Cub Scout thing. Right. So my dad pulled me out of the Cub Scouts because they weren't teaching me any of the required skills. Okay. He's like, target shooting, you need to learn how to hit something. Okay. They, they teach you how to hit a target. Yeah. Not a moving target. Are you fucking serious? I swear to God. Jesus. You got to remember, my dad, specifically my dad. Yeah. T- moving target. You okay. had to learn how to hit a moving target. All right. Uh, leading. How old were you? Nine? Uh, I was 13. Okay. 12, 13 when I first started. We, uh-huh. we went until I was about 15. And yeah. then I went a couple times on my own. I did trapping. Yeah. Once or twice. I had a bad experience trapping. No, no. I'm saying in the Boy Scouts, how old were you? Oh, I was like uh, 12. 13. Oh, all right. And he pulled me out immediately. He's like, no, this is not going to be where you learn how to survive in a bad situation. Yeah, but they're not really... Well, um, like I said, it's my... It's basic skills. Yeah, well... (laughs) They're not trying to teach you how to fucking live through the apocalypse, you know? Yeah, but he was. (laughs) Okay. He's like, you need these skills to survive. I'm like, where the fuck am I going? Right. I didn't say fuck in front of my daddy would have knocked my teeth. Right. Can I tell you something? If the apocalypse happens, I always wanted to be that guy who was, you know, hiding... No, I want to be dead. (laughs) I want to. I want to stand right under the bomb. Hit me. All right. Sorry. No, it's pretty funny. <laughs> I think they want to be our friends. As, as <laughs> right. Uh, yeah. I want to be. I want to hold up that sign. Welcome. Welcome, welcome to aliens Earth. or whatever. Welcome, welcome to Earth. <laughs> it's not said once in that movie. I know. I just love that. No, he says welcome. He does say he said, it. Welcome he says to welcome Earth. to Earth. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, not the Will not, Smith enunciates. Not the race. Smacks the shit out of people. Also <laughs> enunciates. <laughs> yeah, keep my wife's head, keep my fucking, wife's name out of my out of your fucking mouth. Fucking cuck. <laughs> anyway, I still don't know how this has anything to do with we strive for excellence. I don't know anymore. It's just a song. <laughs> <laughs> you dug it. All right, let's move on to Son of Virginia. Son of Virginia. I, I, I definitely got the. We're from Virginia? No. You <laughs> totally missed it. Did I? Yeah. I th- I think you did. No, not really. No? You mm-hmm. don't get a Jesus and Mary from this? No, I get the... I get sure? the more... Yeah. All right. What do you get? I get the hillbilly... Really? Yeah. Okay. All Saints Day, 98... This old blind dog started calling me associate. Yeah, this is recite your uh, your lineage and genealogy. Mm-hmm. You've got to know your history, son of Virginia. This is what this is what the racist hillbillies. All the right, kind of shit they say. Okay, you know they got you got to know where you came from, boy. Mm-hmm. You know one of those. I hate those guys. I, I, well, I was gonna say I think everybody does, but apparently not. <laughs> Some people are real friendly <laughs> with them. <laughs> um, <laughs> one of my favorite quotes if. If you're at a table with nine Nazis, there's ten Nazis there. Oof, yeah, I love that. I love that statement. <laughs> yeah. Um, thankfully, these guys are not fucking racist. Dicks. No, not at all. Not at all. No way. And I before we looked into this, I was like, I had to do a little research about why you had a you had a feeling. No. You, oh. Well, you get a little country twang into into some music. Uh, you got to start looking. Okay. You got to because you know you got to do your due diligence. Right. Of course. Don't make that face at me. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why the fuck you do that. <laughs> because it's creeping me out. <laughs> so for those who are not watching, well, I don't even know if that picked it up. But I hope it did. But <laughs> I saw it. fucking open. So it. I, there's something going on on this side of my face all day, right? So just now I looked at Dave, and there was a little hair sticking down my lip. Yeah, and I it's a pubic. I stuck my tongue out. <laughs> Kind of licked my lips at Dave, <laughs> and I don't think he appreciated it too much. I I almost slapped you. <laughs> it was just the stop, <laughs> stop doing it. I wish I could, Dave. I'm so trying <laughs> to just move whatever the fuck is going on right here. I want to just stop. Just go this way. Do you want Do you want the Boy Scout knife scissors? No, because your dad would disapprove. <laughs> he would. <laughs> He told me I was doing it wrong and you just fucking cut my lip off. No, he tell you, you gotta use, you know, a trimmer, <laughs> like an adult. <laughs> that I'm fine with, yeah. What a, I try to do it the manly way with a knife, and your dad will be like, fuck is wrong with you? They make clippers. He's like, Son of a bitch. It's a little unnecessary. Yeah. Okay, so <laughs> my dad never been much of a like he's not big on like 
facial hair. He has a mustache. Yeah, I was about to say, doesn't he have he a mustache? He has a mustache. Right. But nothing else. Right. So he very confused by the fact that I have a beard all the time. Is he really? He's like, I don't know why you would do Your that. Dad's I'm like, an interesting guy. He's a weirdo. I love my dad. He's a weirdo. Yeah. So we were talking the other day, and he's been he's been in the hospital for a couple weeks. Right, right. So he he's got a beard going. Get out of here. Yeah. And um take a picture, please. I, I did. I'll show you in a, in a minute. Yeah. So but the big thing is he's like, I really want to shave. Right. And he has the I could understand that because he he's never razor. he doesn't have it. Because you know he's diabetic. He can't really shave with a blade. Okay. But he has an electric trimmer. Is that true? Like what? Yeah. Well, like he a... shouldn't. In case he cuts himself, he can right. bleed pretty bad. Oh, okay. Because he takes blood thinners and a whole bunch oh, of stuff. Oh, I got you. Okay, okay. But my mom is like, oh, just shave him. I'm like, how the fuck would I know how to do that? <laughs> He'd be yelling at you the whole time. Look at me. <laughs> I thought he prepared you for shit like this. I said something to my mom, and she just, she rolled her eyes at me. I was like, unless it's a ball bag, I have no <laughs> idea. <laughs> Why? Because I'm an asshole. Why? Is that true? It's <laughs> You can shave a ball bag, but you can't shave your dad's I've face? I've never shaved my face right. Well, <laughs> I've never <laughs> shaved my face right, obviously. I've shaved my nuts before. <laughs> Enough times where I know what I'm doing. Uh, oh, boy. Yeah, so look, you looks at me again, mother. Where did we go? See what happens. What happened? I don't know. This was good. You know, in the beginning of this, I was like, wow, we're speaking very professionally. And we're yeah. going through this. That like, shit what went you, out the window. What do you think about this song? Ba, 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 ba. Wow, now we're talking about shaving nut sacks. Here we go. <laughs> Mike and Dave. <laughs> so the next one's Space Grass. Yes. It's pretty good. My favorite song in the world. Not in the world. I'll lump these two together. Jesus Space Grass on and the dashboard. Yeah. Don't worry. It's coming. Yeah, I bet it is. You fucker. <laughs> the fucking best. Between Space Grass and Animal Farm, Animal they're Farm pretty much the too. same. What? They're the same. They're on the same album. I know. They're just kind of they're This was this was C. his this was his what? They're a C to me. Get out of here. I can't talk to you anymore. Okay. This so was, that's how it ends, huh? This was <laughs> Lick your lips at me, but you can't talk to me. This is it. This is it. Remember we were like, one day it's going to just that really worked. I tried. <laughs> I, I fucking tried. I couldn't stick it in a fat roll. <laughs> so it's so, always that last one we get silly. This, yeah. <laughs> this this is the this is the uh uh Neil Fallon Loves Aliens album, by the way. Because there was one song on here that I wish they played. It's called Escape from the Prison Planet. Okay. And in it he mentions Bob Lazar. Do you know Bob Lazar? I do not. What? I'm not a I'm not a conspiracy theorist. Bob aliens. Lazar is the guy who said uh Is that uh, fucking aliens guy? Yeah, that's it. Aliens guy. You know, you know the guy with the wild hair? Aliens. No, that's Giorgio Sukalos. How the fuck would I know this? Because you're not see, listen, listen. I'm the I'm the I'm the I, I, apparently I'm the supernatural guy on on here because I, I love I I've, I've put them on here the songs I don't know that, why you're still doing this like I, I don't know the world's biggest turkey <laughs> I put these I, I put Wait, Hangar eighteen on, on if here we're gonna put, do, if we're gonna do something vaguely racist I'm what tell the, the hell are you talking Hold about on. turn your hands towards me no like I'm not gonna hit you I promise no I I swear okay hang on how do you get an Italian person to shut up you're a dick. <laughs> You're right, though. <laughs> All right. So, All right, anyway. uh, Bob Lazar. Yeah, I, I don't know if you noticed, but I I, I try to stick in the... Al <laughs> <laughs> yeah, baby. The alien songs. There's no real ghost songs, but, you know, uh, originally when we were starting a, a podcast, I tried to talk you into doing one about ghosts and stuff like that, and you said no. Well, <laughs> the only reason I don't is a lot of what I believe... Mm -hmm. Is gonna go against what you believe. I don't care, but it's also gonna piss off a lot of people. Oh, all right, because it, it it dances it quite deeply into religion. Oh, okay, yeah. But all right, so uh, Bob Lazar. Let me just explain to you. Bob Lazar is the guy who, uh, in the he says in the nineteen seventies, I believe he uh, he worked at uh, uh, S four which was on, uh, it's in the same area as Area 51 in Nevada. And he said that he was uh, hired to back engineer alien spacecraft that we had recovered. Okay, so he's a reverse engineer. Yeah, that's what I mean. You know, reverse yeah. engineer. 
and he said things. I, there, are, I've listened to a lot of interviews with him. He, he's very <sighs> weird. He's a weirdo, but As he's old. he's believable in some things. He's he's like he's very dramatic in other things. So it's hard to tell if he's, he's the guy who claimed he could stare at goats and kill them. Who the fuck is that? that? You don't remember the guy who claimed he was part of a CIA group? George Clooney? No, no. It was, they made a movie, movie about, about it. it. It was him and you and McGregor. I don't. I don't. No, I don't. Uh, you know what? I probably. I probably heard about the guy, yeah. but. So the problem is, I lump a lot of the conspiracy theorists yeah. into that. Yeah. Where it's like, well, okay, see, they claim they, but they can't actually do it. But when see, here's watched. here's the thing: is that <clears throat> this was a time when when conspiracy theaters th- theaters conspiracy theories were fun. Yeah, they got real fucked up later. The, it, it, recently, like you either have to. Uh, whatever, we're not going to get into it. Without without getting into it, there are some that the, turned out to right. be true. The Tuskegee experiment. <clears throat> no, but I'm not MK even saying Ultra. that. I'm saying the recent stuff. Oh, the recent, no. Recent, recent stuff. Well, you have to be a certain ideology to believe it. Or, you know, yeah, this is I, fun stuff. And that ide- ideology is stupid. This, uh, <laughs> this, this is fun stuff. Aliens, you know, Bigfoot, Loch Ness Monster. That was... Listening to Coast to Coast on the way All home. The fun monsters. Did, did you ever listen to Coast to Coast? I don't even know what that is. <gasps> He's what are we doing? Out. I don't know. Coast to Coast was uh, Art, Art Bell. I've heard of Art Bell. Okay, so overnight, right, uh, Art Bell would do uh, uh, Coast to Coast. And he was the master of... Uh, of uh, the, these, these weird... The oddity, the occult. These weird stuff. And he would tell, you know... And it was overnights, and sometimes I would work overnights, and I would listen to Art Bell, or we'd go camping, and uh, me and my friend Bobby, we started a band called Conspiracy Pork for a while, because we would go camp. Listen, why? I'm not laughing, what are you laughing at you. At? I'm not laughing at you, just the name is funny. Yeah, so what? It, the reason why we called the band that was because we would go camping, and, the, and I would bring up my satellite radio, and we would listen to Art Bell, uh, and have a fire, and I would make a pork loin. So we would call it it was the conspiracy pork. I'm mad I wasn't there now. It was the conspiracy pork. That and then like we started we started a band and we called it conspiracy pork. Sounds like a lot of fun. Uh-huh. And I love pork loin. Mm. Yeah. Yummy. It's a double win. But anyway, so this uh, uh, this is a long-winded way of saying that um yeah. This was Neil Fallon's uh Alien album. Okay. Excuse me. Well, not all of it. But uh this is an album this is an album you should listen to from front to back. It's my favorite clutch album. Okay. I can, uh, I can give it a shot. An Animal Farm you didn't like? It was okay. It's... Come on, the fir- the opening line is listen up, you stinking listen maggots. Up, you stinking maggots. <laughs> it's good. Um, the while well, I've been appointed to inform you, your days are numbered. Yeah, <laughs> little green men are coming our way. Tastes just like chicken, they say. Which reminds me of the um, the Twilight Zone episode to serve man. Yeah, it's a cookbook. Mm-hmm. So this was. Uh, the end of the of the of the regular set. Okay. This is where the set ended. And then the encore and then the encore stuff. the next three songs. Which the encore starts with reg, uh, the regular the regulator, which I liked, but I was one of my favorite songs. The name confused me because of the song. There's okay. another song, an older song. Okay. Called John the Regulator. All right. Which is about John the Baptist. Okay. I like that song a lot, and this was okay. not that. And what the fuck did you think this was? Did you I think they were doing a cover? Did you really? Yeah, I didn't right. know until I heard it. But uh, John the Re- uh, the Revelator is yeah. It's fucking, not even the same fucking thing. Yeah, whatever. Fuck you. You just said it was the same thing. It might as well. No, it's not. That's the whole problem. Is it? <laughs> I enjoy that. This was okay. All it's right. a it's a B. I'll give that a B. Okay. I'll give Electric Worry a B plus. Okay. And oh, you're just blasting through these last three. You don't even no, want to no, fucking talk reason, anymore. There's a reason I'm putting them together. The Wolfman kindly requests is an A. Okay. So there's like three A's, one A plus. Right. Which is that the only song they played off of? Uh... Oh, you can name Timmy Turner and the Midgets. I don't know the name. I don't know the name of the albums. I just said yeah, Earth Rocker. All right. Which, by the way, that song. Mm-hmm. I wish they played. I love Earth Rocker. Rocker. The song? Yeah. But uh, I'm surprised that's the only song they played off of that album. Yeah. All right. Apparently. Yeah. So but back to the regulator. Good. It's a good song. Okay. It's actually, I've heard that song before. Yeah. Well, uh, I think. Knowing it was clutch. If I if I remember correctly. I, can I look this up? Yeah, why not? Um, 
I think. I'm not gonna tell you what to do. That played in one of the first episodes of The Walking Dead. It might have, but I think that I think it did. You didn't I watch mean, The Walking th- no, Dead? No, I did. I watched the beginning and I read uh, the comic books. The comic books. I stopped at at 103. Which is funny. I, I 115. Yeah. So I checked out, and then I th- I went. And back it's not. And it's not because I didn't like it. It's just that I didn't. You ran out of them. Yeah. Somebody sent them to me uh, electronically, mm-hmm. and I just yeah. Uh, clutch. Uh, Walking Dead. Clutch. Walking Dead. Yes, the regulator. Yep. What was the song they played? They play. Uh, no, that's not it. The regular. Okay, the mid season, mid season two premiere. They used okay. it. Okay. All right. Yeah. Uh, there were, I think the I think Clutch has had a couple of songs. Uh, in 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 things, not a lot. Yeah, but I definitely think I definitely remembered it from The Walking Dead because when it started playing, I was like, oh, "That's Clutch! That's Clutch!" You know, I, I mean, you know, you get excited when a band you like. I definitely is, get that. I, uh, I definitely understand. I definitely agree. But right. um, it's a good song, but it just doesn't, you know, it doesn't tickle that part of my my brain. All right, I'm not gonna shit on it. Okay. Um, like I said, Electric Worry, I'll, I'll throw a B on that. Yeah, you didn't. But I I thought those would you you the would uh, make on the request is an A. So Earth Rocker right. and Slaughter Beach are going to be the the ones that I'm definitely adding to my list, and I'm gonna I'm definitely gonna finish. Well, you only Earth got Rocker. heard one song from Earth Rocker. <laughs> I know, but I'm gonna give it. I'm gonna give yeah. it the full the full treatment. Yeah, yeah. I give no them all. Problem. Give give. Uh, well, I don't know if you like uh, the the self titled. The, the, the self titled I love. The idea is to take the ones I like first. Okay. And and rip it would expand the from there. I and I'll, then go back and then start I'll from the that. beginning. I'll take that. Yeah. What I got from this is. Um, I've been kind of resisting listening to them because uh-huh. people are like you gotta, you gotta, and I'd be like, "Yeah, hey, go fuck yourself." Well, I don't you, have to know, do the, shit. you know, you know my thing. Yeah, you gotta watch this. No, now no, I don't. I don't. Yeah, but yeah, it's 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 good. It's really good, and I'm glad I got to listen to it this way because mm-hmm. it gives me kind of an open feel to look at, right? And then pick. To well, see that's what I, I kind of. That's why you know what? That's why I thought of it this way of giving you the set list. That way, you get kind of a plethora of. Well, that's a big word. Yeah. <laughs> of of their of their music, and it's not me picking the good songs. Yes, you know what I mean. You kind of left it to the band to show you what right. they like to show right. people. And and that's the funny thing is that listening to this, I'm going, oh, I wish they would have put that on. But now I can tell you, listen to this one. Listen, you know. Yeah. So I, I uh, this was good. I enjoyed this. I had a lot of fun with this. Yeah. Also telling you about how my dad is a monster when it comes to <laughs> camping, hunting. <laughs> You licking your lips at me? Fucking. <laughs> you mistakening. Mistakening? Mistakening. You, you mistake, the mistakening. <laughs> you mista- mistake. Mis- How do you say that? Mistaking? Is that a word? Mistook? No. Me mis- mistaking. Yeah. Mis- you mistaking Giorgio Sucolos for Bob Lazar? I don't know who these motherfuckers are. I know. I just like saying the names. Getting it out there. Jo- Giorgio suck my dick and uh, <sighs> come on, Bob Lamar. <laughs> Bob Lamar. What did you expect from me? I don't know. I don't know. We do have to do something about ghosts I one spe- day. I okay. I can tell you some funny stories. Yeah, I can tell you. I some, can tell you some hospital stories. I, well, I want to hear those, and I also want to hear. Uh, I, I can also tell you some stories of myself. Uh, me and Mary Jane when we moved in together. We lived in a in a haunted apartment in a basement. My brain went. She used to dress up in a sheet. Woo! No, no. <laughs> then I chased this her was, around the house. This was. Uh, listen, it hasn't happened since, but that place we first lived in was haunted, for real. Like I believed in ghosts before that, but then this happened. And I was like, Ugh. you know what made me believe in ghosts? Roxy. What? Roxy, I Oof. I don't think I ever experienced anything Roxy. crazy there. But Mike has told me, yeah, late nights at Roxy, yeah, just random, not only random stuff moving. You saw people, no, oh. and harmless, no, nothing, right? But you but saw you, like someone like walk on the uh-huh. hallway or something. Ooh, I just got chills. Yeah. yeah, I told I told Dennis, but he goes, yeah, that happens. Yeah, and then he'd wake me up playing drums, Dennis. 
Oh, yeah. I was like, what? No, he was still Holy like, crap. scaring the shit out of me because it made him laugh so hard. He almost peed once laughing oh. at me. Well, it, never mind. I'm not going to say what I was about to say. It's terrible. He could wake you up with drums now. Yeah, he probably could. God. Oh, was, I do miss him. He was so funny, man. He was great. He was a good dude. I told you that by the time he walked in, me and Mo were working. He walked in, him and his buddy Pete uh, carrying a parking meter. <laughs> no. He's like, don't fucking worry. It's empty. I told you I tried out for their band once, right? Yeah. There, uh, there was something like a blues band or something like that, and I tried out. Was that Stoke Motive? I don't know. I don't even think it had a name when we it first. Pete, thought. Uh, Jerry from the. I don't remember. I remember Pete and and, and Pete, tall, skinny guy with a bald head, yes. right? And uh, and Dennis, uh, I sang, and I don't remember who the drummer was. I, I don't remember, but I came in and did it a few times, and then that might have been that might have been uh, what ended up being Stoke Motive. It that might because then I was just like. Eh. It's not my thing. thing. Yeah, it's all right. But it was fun. Dude, dude, I got to play with Dennis and Pete, you know? Dennis was always fun. Yeah. just We used to have a blast just hanging out. Like, you'd be at work. Dennis would come in, yeah, sit down with you, listen to some music, yeah. talk. No, nothing business related. Yeah. Just have a good time. If you if you needed to learn how to do something, he'd yeah. show you. He was great. Oh, there were, there were times where we would come out and we would just sit there and talk. Yep. Just hang out at Roxy because it was just fun. It was just a fun place to hang one out. One of my favorite times at Roxy was changing all the drum heads on a new kit uh, with Dennis. Okay. Because Mike wasn't in yet. It right. Was, I don't think Mike was working that day. He's like, you're going to do it with me. And right. And no special tuning keys, just a regular tuning key. You hit the drum, get 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 it in tune, get it sounding nice. And he's like, that one's good. Put it on the put it on the kit. Uh -huh. And you grab the next one and just swap them out. Because, you know... Guys would loosen the drums to make them sound heavy and then put pock marks in them. Right. It looked like fucking the side of Seal's face uh -huh. by the end of the night. Gross. <laughs> it's <is> fucked up. <laughs> it looked like a kid with cystic acne. <laughs> but uh, So yeah, that's that's clutch. I can't wait to actually start digging cool. in. Yeah. And then the next four we're going to do... The, not now. Oh. No, the next four we're going to do... Uh, we're going to try maybe a couple of different things. Okay. Uh, we'll talk and about in between, it. we're going to talk about some stuff. He might be vacationing. I might be doing some vacation oh, stuff. Oh, that's true. Yeah. So, so we're going to figure that out because summer's coming and yeah. Well, summer's here. Yeah. So maybe I don't know. We'll figure it out. If uh, yeah, maybe we'll take a couple weeks off. Maybe we won't. Who knows? Let's see what happens. Well, I, no matter what, there will be something every Monday. Oh, okay, cool. Whether or not it's one of us, one or of us, or yeah. But we're going to be doing this. That would be summer. cool. That would be interesting. Yeah. You know? We'll see. I think you can still do Mike and Dave and just cross me out and use Mike the Wizard. You know? It'll still be Mike and Dave hit the stage. Uh, that would be weird. That would, that'd be the time we do all the long songs you can't no, you can't. Yeah, stand. please. Do it. Yeah. Do that. Oh, my God. It's going to be so great. <laughs> all right. So for now, we got to talk about uh, Unworked Apparel. Uh, John does amazing work. I can't wait to see what he's got coming up. Uh, check out Unworked Apparel on Instagram. Mm -hmm. um, we got to check out uh, Acist, which is Joe's band, A-E-C-Y-S-T, on YouTube. Good. Uh, is my spelling all right? I have no idea. You could, yeah, I don't know. I know your spelling is not much better. No. Uh, then we I got forget. The Weege. Uh, by the way, I, I'm sorry, I just cut you go off. Ahead. I'll look at something and go, okay, look that up. And it's spelled weird. And I go, uh, and I go to Google and I'm like, nope. Uh, Fuck. Yep. I got to go back. <laughs> I am terrible. Six times a day. Go ahead. So the next one is The Weege. You can check them out on Bandcamp. Their album Searchlights. Mm -hmm. Totally worth a listen. Totally worth a buy. All right. And um, in this case, check out Clutch. I really got nothing, uh, nothing yeah. other to say than check them out. Listen, let, fa favorite let band. you decide what you like. My favorite band. Oh, one of my favorite bands. I was going to say, we both know Mr. Bungle. Uh, no, Mr. Bungle's not one of my, not one of my favorites. Really? Yeah. Do you have a favorite? A favorite band of, of all time? Yeah. Uh, Wormed. Yeah. Yeah. No, Faith No More. I'm there with you. Yeah. Faith. An, we may not agree on which album's the best. Right. Uh, and, uh, and I understand why. Right. But uh, yeah. Fucking love Faith yeah. No More. Faith No More. Uh, I, I, you know, I, I have like a, I have like a, a top five or 10 that I could, that it, are on repeat. Forever, Forever. Yeah. yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, Clutch is one of them. Rancid. There's a lot of songs that I haven't put on these lists only because I don't want to. It's so weird to say this. I don't want to use them. You don't want to burn them, right? On, right? Right? Right, on a, on, right? And then later on down the line, I'm like, ah, fuck! I could have used that song. 
Yeah, I. We're gonna end up using songs more than once. I think so. Once yeah. We, once we've come to terms with that, it's just a matter of remembering how many times we've used it. Yeah. Like we've already had head over heels twice. By, yeah, twice. <laughs> a couple of Iron Maiden songs twice. Have we had a couple, couple of Metallica? Maiden? No. We had one Maiden song twice. We have a couple of Metallica, Metallica songs twice. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. yeah. Um. All right. Yeah, we're gonna get we're gonna get through more than more and more of this stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So for now. Uh, I am basher.exe on Instagram. I'm noogs29. We have hitthestagepodcast.com. Yep. And on Instagram, um, you can find us on any major uh, podcasting app. Right. And Mike and Dave hit the stage on YouTube. Correct. So for now, take care of each other. Take care of yourselves. Hail Halford. Hail Halford. We'll see you soon. <laughs>